All right, guys, we're live. I'm here with Tom Stewart, the owner and founder, inventor of EasyNet. And uh, we just finished filming and making some videos. And uh, Tom Stewart is in my hero program, the self-defense tutorial. He's been doing all the classes online and he came down to do some training and just basically go through some of the exercises and drills he's seen. And uh, <clears throat> it, always, it always fascinates me when I, when I get to train him and meet him because he's a, I would say a hardcore self-defense advocate. And I think um, in this industry, it's a small niche. Is it? It's a small niche, but a very like hardcore niche. The people who are into it are into it. The people who know about it, follow it. The people who love it, love it. A fitness industry is huge. The self-defense niche is small, but yet, Everybody should be learning how to defend themselves and, and, and get that, you know, be able to empower themselves and, and be able to, you know, walk out of the house and, you know, go somewhere and feel safe. And even if they don't have all the tools and know, you know, even if they might not have the confidence to take on, you know, the mm. biggest guy, at least have the confidence to know how to stand your ground, bring up your hands, create distance, talk your way out of a fight, at least something like that. So Tom, I want to know what, how is self-defense helped you in your life? Like, what has it done for you? Why are you 62 years old and wanting to, 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 to learn self-defense at 62? Well, you brought up a good point. And as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's not, you know, 62 or 42 or 22. I think, as a wise man told me, that, you know, self-defense should be as routine as brushing your teeth. I mean, I wash my hair, brush my teeth, train. Uh, I've selected self-defense because I figured if I'm going to train, I might as well train as something that might help me to protect myself and my family to one day, right? So uh, for me, it's a form of training that I love. And secondarily, it gives me, you know, let's not make up stories. So I feel great. You know, I walk into a new bar, I can beat everybody up. That's not what it's about. Mm, good point. It's really about being able to be in any situation, a late night walk with your wife, uh, a bar, a restaurant, um, on the bus, in a cab, what, pick, pick a spot, where you just know that if something bad arises, you have enough skill set and you've practiced enough hitting things that the first time you might have to hit something is not in that park. So I like the fact that, uh, quite honestly, and I use the same analogy all the time, you drive with caution, not with paranoia, Point. and you prevent yourself from getting injured. You take self-defense program that fits your style, Good. and you feel that you're not going to get into an accident and be hurt by somebody else. I often say that, Tom. Uh, <clears throat> It was a couple couple of days ago I went out and I almost almost got into a little scuffle with somebody. And and then as I was talking to my buddy, I said, uh, he's like, well, you know, I'm like, I'll tell you the difference between fighting and self-defense. Fighting is me going out there and like bringing up my hands with the intention to fight. Self-defense is me, um, being attacked or being in a situation where my life is in danger and I have to do everything to protect it. And that's where, you know, fighting is, is to me, fighting is going out and not avoiding the fight, not being aware, uh, maybe not keeping mm -hmm. your ego in check, being, getting into that person's game. Yeah. Self-defense is when I've tried to defuse, when I've tried to deescalate, when I've tried to walk away and the person has made the intention to strike me, and that's when I decide to strike. And I'll bet this is true, because I've experienced this. I've been in some uh, true street fights, not of my own volition, but three you know, bad, real, like bad ones, the real ones. And what I found in my life, you may find the same, anybody that has a legitimate level of training mm. avoids fights Absolutely. at all cost. So you take self-defense, not to fight, to avoid fights. fights. And I, I have something to add to this. Um, I hate fighting. I hate it. I've seen 
you know, I saw a kid get stabbed and die in front of me. I've been, um, I've been in countless, I've seen people get jumped. I've been sucker punched. I fought, I've seen people get stabbed. I've, like when you see violence and you've hear and you've seen the bones break and the guy being jumped and you've seen the ugly part of fighting. Mm. And I don't mean fighting in the ring. I'll fight anybody in the ring, anybody. It doesn't scare me. Worst is gonna happen, I'm gonna get knocked out. But in the street, I'm gonna get knocked out and then three guys might jump me and one might pull out a knife and decide to stab me and they're gone. So that's the, the reality and the difference. And the more you've ex been exposed to that and you know that one punch, you get knocked out, you fall down, you hit your head on the step like I saw a guy and you're yeah. in a fucking coma. It doesn't take a lot. And I got a really important point to take to say, in my humble opinion. This is really important. I hope I don't. I don't hope I don't forget it. But um, you, what Nick said is so important. Okay, we're not out there to fight other people. Mm -hmm. Self defense is not a clinic. It's not training. Really, it's a lifestyle. Important. It's the way you form in your head when you go out. And when you're confident in taking care of yourself and your family, it's amazing. Now, what I wanna say about Nick's point, cause I did almost forget, cause I am 63, 62, oh, 61, I can't remember. I am too old to remember. So, it, it, oh, then I forgot it again, you know? <laughs> well, you? what I was gonna say is very important. If you take karate, which I study, and you've gotta go there for 18 years to get a black belt, which is, you know, you can buy them. I can go buy a black belt and wear it. My point is really a salient point. I did the Kung Fu, you know, you get the white and the blue. And the other. But Nick's program is truly a self-defense program. Those, they call, they call them martial arts. Mm. Martial arts, that's what they are. And they're great and I don't disagree with them. But for me, Nick's program, it was within one month, 30 days, that I had specific techniques, right? That taught, that I could do without a black belt or a green belt, you know, in my home, in front of my television. Now also, you could be the person who orders and gets involved in Nick's program and tells your friends about it, but doesn't do it. Mm. Nick's program is for people who want to learn an easy technique, but you have to be repetitive. You have to be repetitive. You gotta put your time in. If you put your time in, this program is very effective. I'm not going to use the word easy because easy denotes lack yeah. of daisyfulness, yeah. but it's effective and it's efficient. The energy you put in, you get immediately answers. You don't have to have some, sin, some guy saying, oh, here's your green belt. And also those classes are meant for in a little studio, you stand in a ring, you fung, kung fu, crane strike and all this stuff. Next program is for the streets. Ooh. It's for the bar. It's for walking with your wife. Is that, that fair? That, that's what I did, Tom. When I built the program, I, I, I kept it as simple as possible, direct. Hmm. I eliminated whatever is not of use, kept only... I, 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 I kept it as short hmm. and as direct, but it's, it's efficient in the time and the steps that you learn. Uh, it, it like you know like if people follow my YouTube channel, you're learning from you're going from here to there to there. You can't learn. It's like learning how to play music. Yeah. In the program, I'm starting step by step. I'm talking about psychology and awareness and verbal before I teach you how to throw a strike. And you know I, a lot of this stuff is trial and error. I remember working in clubs, and I, I I realized in clubs the importance of how your environment plays a factor, your mindset. Uh, your verbal skills, your awareness skills, before anything is done, before mm. you throw a first punch or strike, eh, there's so much more before that. And I think that's what, even when I did martial arts as a child, was never covered, was never talked about. You came in, I did Kung Fu, you learned how to hit, but they never taught me how to diffuse, how to deescalate, uh, how to, you know, what to look at. And sometimes you've seen some videos on YouTube of MMA fighters being knocked out or sucker punched because they think it's a one-on-one -on -one fair fight like in the ring and the guy punches him from behind. Not to say that they can't fight, but they're not trained to be aware for more than one attackers. No. So all that, or they're not aware, you know, to look at somebody's hands if he has a knife and this and, is what I really break down. And also, as you know, with, with uh, and we're not disparaging other programs, they're great and we recommend them if, you, if that's what you want. Yeah. But if you want something that is specifically empowers you, 
to take care of yourself and your family in real situations, okay? I once had a group of guys come onto a bus after me. Five guys came onto a bus yeah, after really? me oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in downtown Toronto. I got away, I got, I got some cuts and things like that, um, but I was able to get away from, the bus driver jumped off the bus. Oh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but anyway, they came onto the bus to get me because I'd seen them earlier. One guy wanted to take me, uh, it, was at the, it was at the CNE. Tell you exactly what happened. I'm at the CNE, last day of the CNE, I'm with one other guy. And all these people were running past me, jumping on the rides. And I said, the next person that passes me, I'm going to hit them. And it had been a lot of young 16-year-old girls. So then I said, stop. This person goes past me. I went, what? You're stopping. Uh-oh. He grabbed me. We went, <laughs> just like in the movies, we went over the railing. A yellow railing still onto the ground. And he was tall. And uh, this is before I met Nick. This is 20 years ago. At the end of that story... The police came with their horses and they broke it all up. I got on the subway. They followed me. I didn't know why. What wasn't I? Aware. I wasn't aware. If I'd been aware, I would have never got on the subway. Mm. So I got on the subway, got to the bus stop. They came onto the bus at the back of the bus. The bus driver got out, jumped off the bus. People ran away. And I was my friend and I against two. His nose got broken. I got some cuts and bruises. I think I broke one of the guy's arms, but I don't really know for sure. And then we got off the bus. So there's a perfect example where if I'd been thinking about my awareness, yeah. I never would have had that problem. I would have said, okay, they're still coming after me. Okay, I would have gone another bus. Yeah, that's, you know. I, oh, sorry, I wanted to yeah. say what the program that Nick's doing, it gives a foundation first. Yeah. And those other, some of the, like the brown belts and blue belts and those kinds of things, there's, they're meant to be a fight that's technical, that's very pretty. And there's also this other person there. Who is that? It's a freaking referee. Uh, <laughs> you don't have referees change, on the streets. Yeah, it change, <laughs> changes the whole fight, you know what I mean? I remember, like, I mean, the first time I experienced it uh, was when I started working in clubs. And I remember the first big brawl we got into a club. And I, it was Wax Lounge where I used to work. Uh, it was my first club I worked at. And uh, it was... Like we were like 15 or 10 on three, whatever it was. And I remember I panicked. It was the first time I saw, a, and I've done a lot of training, a lot of not enough scenarios where I was screaming, I was freaking out. I didn't know if I should hit, if I shouldn't hit, who I should hit. I was panicking, I was pushing. And I realized after I was like under adrenaline, I was shaking and I was like, what the fuck was this? I've never trained like this. I wasn't ready for something this big. And I was like, Okay, this is what it looks like. It's chaotic. It's, you know, mm -hmm. and then what happened was mm -hmm. the more often it happened, the more familiar I got with the type of situations I was in, with the environment, the more I learned how to control my breathing, uh, my, my adrenaline, uh, the more I got into those situations the more I was getting clarity each time because mm -hmm. it almost became like fighting in a ring but in the street where I, I knew I had to stay in control, I had to breathe, I had to stay in the present moment, I had to get out of my head, I wasn't time to question my training and I had to give it my all 100%. When I was working in the clubs, I also used to tell the bouncers and doormen that I used to, some of them that used to train or some of them who didn't, I go, guys, part of your job is also to train three, four times a week. I did night training every day. Every time I went to the gym, I was doing night drills. Cause I'm like, when I would go to the club on Friday, Saturday, I, I would always tell myself, today I might get stabbed. Today I might get stabbed. Today I might, and it's, I would think that every time. And that kept me on my toes. So, uh, you know, like I said, the first time I experienced that, I was like, shit, it's so, chaotic. But there's a point that Nick mentioned in passing, and it's a great word. And I never thought of it till just this minute, but, if you're in a situation and you've had Nick's training, you do have clarity. That's a great word because you're not panicking. Yeah. Even if it's two guys and they're big guys, you've got the training, you know you're going to stay back. If you can't run, you know, you're going, okay, first relax, put my hands up. Okay, watch the hands, watch this. Watch. And you're calm. I'm as calm as a Christmas morning yeah. opening presents. It's so calm and peaceful because of the training. My God, you can't fly an airplane without training. Well, how do you protect yourself if you're not trained? Here's the example I give people, okay? Look at in schools. What do they do? Why do they do fire drills? 
in schools. They do fire drills so the kids don't panic. So they at least they have a plan. Good point. Now, maybe it's not 100%, mm -hmm. but they do fire drills and they know, okay, if you hear this bell, you go to this class, you go to this line, the exits are here. So it, does it guarantee? There's no guarantees in life. Nobody could guarantee their system is 100% foolproof. That's bullshit because there's too many variables and scenarios. Yeah. But it's all about, you know, increasing your chances of survival, of clarity, so, of, of, of knowing what to do. Here's a great example, again, from leading from Nick's analogy. Airplanes. Let's think about an airplane for a minute. Let's think about a train for a second. They train and train and train for a crash. They drop the thing out, the people slide down, they do all of that training. There are one in a gazillion times they're ever gonna use it. But when they do need it, they need to be right on. Right, absolutely. So you could train for 15 years and never have a problem. But boy, it feels good to know that in your you, heart that, you know. that you've trained for that one incident, for that one time where the plane needs you to jump out on the raft. Absolutely, Tom, that's a, that's a great point. Cause some people are like, I live in a safe neighborhood, I might never use it. It doesn't matter, you know it. You know it, and I mean, uh, you know, you know, I worked in clubs. Most of the times when I, when I did fight and sh you know shit did happen, it was there. Other than outside, I'm you know my ego's in check, my awareness is good. I know what I diffuse. I could avoid ninety five percent unless the, and I'll never let the person get into my range. And if he does, let me tell you, because I've done so much training, I'm always aware, I'm always a step ahead. That confidence that people get is huge. And yeah. even just, even if nothing happens, just you knowing and walking down the street with that confidence is gonna change. And that confidence is, it, I, I say, is leaked onto your personal life, how you act with your boss, and with so, your, in, in your spouse, I, I, in your family, I, everything. Right. And that, I'm just going off of Nick's points, and I'll give you this other one. Uh, if you're a guy, I can't speak to women, I can speak to guys. And having studied Nick's program, trained with Nick and all that, I'll tell you something that's pretty cool. This is just cool, it's got nothing to do with nothing except it's cool. My wife thinks it's cool. Like my okay. wife, my wife looks, and I'm, I'm not gonna make any stories up for you, but I'm gonna tell you this, my wife, she's seen me train, and she goes, wow, you're good at that. Like, you're good at that, sweetheart. She feels better being with me. Yeah. Nothing probably will ever happen, but my relay, and I gotta say it changed our whole world, but it's a neat little, a neat little attribute of the program is that my wife feels better well, about me. But think about it, right? It's that alpha male that you're gonna protect her. And even, like, even the fact that your training shows that I'm, there to protect you. That's that feeling that he's training for me to protect me. No, yep. I think that already that does change. That's that's. I'll just say yes. I, and, and you know what? I do it. Um, I do it because I'm with my son when I'm out with my sister. And and even for me, wherever I am, I want to have that confidence that if something were to happen, and it's not about winning the fight or losing the fight. It's all about survival it's all about whatever happens and this is my theory guys and this is very important what i'm going to say this is probably one of the important things i'm going to teach you guys in self-defense because a lot of people ask me nick what do i do if somebody's attacking you you might as well fight if somebody's grabbed you and he's stabbing you you might as well fight if somebody grabbed you and punched you you might as well fight and i'll tell you why you're better off fighting and taking a beating than taking a beating and not fighting the reason why, if you fight, if you the guy beat you up, whatever, he attacked you, but you gave him a fight, at least your confidence is gonna be, look, I gave it everything I had, it, it wasn't my day, that's it. But yeah. if, you, if, you're, if you got hit and you're taking a beating and you don't fight back, what happens when you're gonna go home at night, all bruised up, and you're gonna lie in your bed, you're gonna tell yourself, I wish I would have fought. I wish I would have fought. The fight continues in your head. And I've seen yeah. this with women. Yeah. I trained a woman who was attacked. She was beaten. But you should have saw the other guy. She was in the hospital and he was 
in the same, in the next room in a stretcher. She was black and blue. And she's like, you should have saw his face. The cops couldn't believe it. He goes, yeah, he beat me. But I gave him the fight of his life. Oh. And she felt great about it. And then I've worked with women who didn't fight back, who were like, like scared and they kept that with them. That's so important. That's, yeah. it's, yeah. I mean, I can tell a quick story. It really happened, walking along a lane. And it was eight, it was getting dark. dark. Two gentlemen walking this way. They had a great big dog. And, uh, and uh, as they got up to us, this dog leapt and barked in front of me. Well, I went into a stance and Lynn screamed and the two guys started laughing. So I kept walking. And this is after I'd been, had some training with Nick. And I said, Lynn, you know, sometimes a man has got to be a man. I, I, I got to go back and see these two guys. And she said, okay. I went back, not an issue. I said, so you think that's funny, eh? I stood the way I was taught. I gave distance. I stood back. They had the dog, right? And then one guy stepped step forward. As soon as he stepped forward, I hit him. I didn't wait for any. I whack. I, I hit him right about here. Boom. Not here. There's a whack. And I stood calmly back. He went, hey, sorry, man. His friend said, hey, we're sorry, man. I'm like, sorry, we're sorry. And I said, fine. Have a nice day. And they left. Four years ago or three years ago before I met Nick, if I had said to my wife, sweetheart, I'm going back, she would have screamed bloody blue murder. Don't, sweetheart, it's only a dog. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. She didn't say a word, she gave a little nod. I got chills, look at this. This is not bullshit. I got chills telling that story. My wife said, okay, okay. Listen to Nick. I was far enough away if they both come yeah. at me. I could have just turned and run, no problem. Um, but you so, were ready, you were. But, uh, uh, my wife, she went, and you know, that felt really good. Yeah. And if something bad had happened, but well, I can't say if something bad had happened. Nothing bad happened. Nothing bad. I, I, good point. <laughs> what if something happened? It didn't. There's no point of going there, I tell people. What's the point? And what had happened, I mean, I could have kept walking because Nick probably would have told me to keep walking. Um, but yeah, sometimes a man's got to be a man. It's as simple as that. Simple as but, that. And I felt such confidence. But that's not the point. My wife felt confident in me going back after two guys with a dog. <laughs> that's that's, that's awesome. a story, guys. So that's what, I, again, that's what self-defense does for you guys. So Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll be making another video where I'll be taking your some questions. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Go follow the program. I'll put the link in the comment box. Go check it out. Yes. Uh, 48 lessons. Yes. Brand new fight analysis access to my seminars, my instructor course, uh, a woman's self-defense videos, and I'm creating a kids hero program now. I'm creating a bullying for program just for kids. That is just for kids. Brilliant. Yeah, so I'm putting all that in there. So uh, that's it guys, thanks for watching. Been a pleasure there. And thanks stay everybody. tuned, we filmed six or eight videos with Tom that I'm gonna be putting up. A lot of them are just about awareness and how to defuse the situation how to size up an attacker, how to go preemptive, working yeah. on strikes. And re um, remember my age when you're, give me a little, give, yeah. me, a little, give me a little slack, okay? <laughs> give me a little slack out there, folks. <laughs> so guys, we're out. Thanks for watching, guys. Right on.